talking about Bashar al-Assad, they have a, a very a big song going on, uh, singing about him, that it goes, Ala Surya Basar Ubas. Have you heard it before? No. No. My point is that it's very, very, uh, in my opinion, yeah. talking about the conflict. Yeah. It gets uh, hard to take an angle. In specific case, talking about the Middle East. I it's tell relatively it. easy. No. If you know the history, I don't think it's that hard. Yeah, the government made the government made a 9/11 that the Americans did, and well, then the they blamed the Okay, but look, listen, my, okay, on, you, you, you tell, let me tell my point of view. Yeah, and I, okay, okay, I, well, I listen, it's my stage. I, I listened to you for like two hours. I didn't say, say it. Okay, then if your stage, you should you should speak. Okay, uh, excuse me, I think we have yeah. one last question. Yeah. Uh, okay, another spin on uh, the uh, inequality. The on the no, what? No, on the refugees. Another on refugees, okay. This, no, but this is, uh, this, uh, what do you say, uh, strive in the West for uh, equality, uh, equality yeah. and the focus on it. Yeah. But uh, do you think that has impacted much on how, uh, how we view the refugees or the ones we uh, we yes. accept our borders. I mean, we, we basically, in both Sweden, Germany, and all other European states, have said that uh, as long as you're uh, fleeing from a war, it's okay, but not if you want to enhance your chances in life. Yeah, well, yes. So, so suffering is a standard for help which I think is the wrong standard. I don't think that's the standard by which you should decide whether to help or not, or whether to bring people in. But I think it's deeper than that, and I'm, I'm going to say some controversial things that are going to upset people, but tough. Um, <laughs> You're just telling your point of view. Everybody's it says my point of view. It's yeah, only my point, point of view. view. Yeah. I happen yeah. to think yeah. it's the yes. truth. Yes. I happen to think it's the truth, but your you don't truth. have to agree with no, me. No, no, your truth. Right? Yes. No, I think there is oh, a yes. truth. But again, you don't have to agree with me. You can you can say I'm full of shit. That's fine. But it's my point of view. Yeah, your um, point of view. Let us back from the talk. Um, I think the deeper problem in Europe and in the West generally is the issue of multiculturalism. It's the idea that all cultures are equal in some way. And I think this is a deep, deep problem in Europe, and I think a deep, deep problem everywhere. I don't think it's true. Cultures are not equal. And European culture has forgotten or repressed what made it great. I believe that the culture developed in Europe in, in, during the Enlightenment is the greatest culture in human history. And I think every culture in the world should emulate it. So, the problems in the Middle East, in my view, would be solved if people were free. If people had respect for two concepts that come from Greece originally, but were developed during the Enlightenment in Europe. And those two concepts are reason, as a means of knowing reality, a, a, a dedication to reason that went through that period, and it's reflected in the founding of America. And because of a dedication to reason, individualism. Individualism comes out of our dedication for reason. Because who reasons? Only individuals reason. So if you combine reason and individualism, they are what make a great culture. And they are what we should be exporting to the world. It's the idea that we should be encouraging every people in the world to embrace. And if you embrace reason and individualism, many of the problems all over the world, South America, Asia, and indeed the countries that have embraced it, have done well. And the countries that have not embraced it haven't done well. So to the extent that Asian countries, Japan, to some extent China, certainly South Korea and Taiwan and Hong Kong and Singapore have embraced the ideas of reason and individualism, some explicitly, some implicitly, they've done phenomenally well. Right? To the extent that, they have, that other countries have not, they've done very, very poorly. But we in Europe, instead of saying, this is what we stand for, this is what it means to be European, if you will. These are the concepts that we stand behind. This is what, if you want to come here, this is what you should embrace. Just like 
in America, the idea was, if you come to America, it used to be, if you come to America, you should embrace the idea of the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, what they represent. We don't do that in America today, and you don't do it in Europe anymore. And I think that's a disaster. I buy that, but it was also, uh, Mr. Payne was also more that uh, uh, if you focus too much on uh, equality, if... Uh, uh, you, you don't give the people the opportunity yeah, to rise up who if, want to rise if, up. If the, if the people coming here don't have the same uh, the same level uh, level of income or yeah. then then you will enhance inequality here. But if you look at uh, the people coming, uh, say people from Somalia or up in somewhere, there's not really a war, but conditions are harsh. Yeah. Uh, then uh, then uh, that would increase inequality here, but, uh, uh, but uh, uh, you would get another view of the refugee. But this focus on uh, equality uh, basically uh, says that we only allow refugees. Certain from. types of refugees. I think you're right. Can you give me a? Can you be a little bit more specific? I've never sure. been to Harvard. I've never been to class there. But can you give me an That's example? That's your advantage. Oh, thank you. Of how they are teaching sacrifice, how they are teaching altruism. Well, open daily paper and look at Mr. Carter, a peculiar creature, who is telling you that we're going to uh, overcome the oil shortage by driving less by giving up. Let us all make a sacrifice. Let's lower our standard of living and we'll all be living better. Now is that a proper philosophy to tell a country that has pride and self-esteem? At one time, with all the faults in American intellectual equipment, and there were a lot of faults, at least people were taught pride in their own country and in the good aspects the great achievements of this country. Today, you're supposed to apologize to every naked savage anywhere on the globe because you are more prosperous, because you've earned your money. You have to feel guilty and apologize for it while he hasn't and doesn't intend to learn from you. He just wants your money. That's what we're being taught. What?